In 860, Varangians were routed out from the Volgian territories by joint forces of Slavs and Krivichans. Despite their triumph, though, leaders of the tribes are unable to reach an understanding. Young and ambitious Pridbor, the leader of the Slavs, weaves a plot against popular and cold-headed Krivich Mitsislav. Pridbor knows his forces are way too weak to take Mitsislav head-on, and the young prince's plan is dependent upon help from a famous Nordic ruler, Rurik. In order to keep his plan low-key, Pridbor seeks help from me after I exiled into the wild, driven by my mysterious visions. I was blessed with visions of the future that showed me Rurik's control of the Slavs' territory. Odin himself must have anointed the Nordic ruler, and thus I accepted Pridbor's quest. With the young prince's blessing, I took the role of a royal envoy and made my journey to the Baltic Sea. Weeks later, the sightings of the Viking ships proved my visions true. Rurik, accompanied by his brothers, sets his foot on the Varangian territory. His ambition? Headship of the Varangian tribes. We are glad to see you. What news from Rurik? Will he help us? Yes, he will arrive here in the morning. Good. We shall await his arrival then. We can't. Mistislav's army is way too strong right now. We should try to weaken it any way we can. We must find a way to gather more troops before Rurik's arrival. If only my barracks were not under Mistislav's control right now. These are your barracks. We will reclaim them tonight. Mstislav closed the main gate to the barracks. He won't be able to open it. There is another way around, to the north, but it is heavily guarded. I was forbidden to get anywhere near that gate. The only way we can get inside is to kill the guards there. Let's go. Hide, Vidar, quick! Someone's coming! We are close, but this area isn't safe. If I get near the barracks, they will attack right away. Men, open this gate now! Ridmore, I would personally rip your head off! Rurik's victory is Pridbor's fall. You can't make someone do your dirty work and expect deference. Odin's my witness, the young prince will end up belly up in Volga if he won't heed his vehement temperament. Truvor, Rurik's older brother, makes my words prophetic. The ceremony turns into a brawl as Pridbor took offense, ending up with a sharp shiv to his throat. The future king, Rurik, makes nothing of this affront. Quite the contrary. He asks me to join his brother Sinius during next day's rush on Belazersk. I reluctantly agree, as there's no secret that this heretic is romancing with Christianity. If he wasn't my king's family, by Odin's name I'd beat him to the crows. Listen, Sinius, it's time to show the Christians our power. I say we burn all their settlements. I wonder about the church. It seems really precious to them. Maybe we just leave it be. That's exactly what we won't do, Sinius. 
burn everything down. I see. I will take care of our base then. We must prepare for resistance. It's time, Sidious. Come with me. Their church is going to burn now. You are wrong, Vidar. The church will not burn. I will defend it whether you like it or not. You just made the worst mistake of your life, Sidious. And last one, too. Kill him! What the hell? Sidious is attacking us! Betrayal! No! Stop! I surrender! With Rurik's flag waving over Belazersk, his army was ready to ride on Holmgard, a stronghold ruled by Pridbor's bloodkin, Vasily. I joined his army right in front of Holmgard's gates. Surprised Rurik hasn't started his assault yet. But the Nordic king has a different agenda. He sent Vasily an ultimatum. Holmgard should be handed over to Rurik, and in return, the citizens will be spared the bloodshed. Vasily's response was blunt and decisive. His arrow landed just a few feet from Rurik's horse. Rurik kept his calm and lifted his finger in the air. The first column of his soldiers split in two, making way for Truvor, holding Pridvor on a leash like a dog. Vasily's eyebrows danced aghast, but before he was able to speak, Truvor's shiv sliced the prince's throat. I looked at Rurik, searching for a scent in his stoic face. Luckily, I found nothing but detest. Rurik and I knew that those who command with ruthlessness and wanton find themselves powerless when the battle is over. Our warrant is over. Time to teach Vasily a lesson, the filthy dog. Attacking his fortifications right away would be silly. We should try to lure him out first. We will cut them off from supplies, and then make them starve to death. My scouts report that these fools store their winter supplies outside the Palisades. But first we shall make sure we don't starve ourselves. Vidar and Truvar, take your best men and seize control of the settlements on our side of the river. Those lousy peasants need to be put out of their misery! <laughs> Hold your horses, Truvor. We need those peasants to provide us with supplies. Otherwise, we won't survive long enough to see Vasily's fall. Look! They're smuggling some food into the town! Stop them! Finally, Vasily is moving his army outside. They must be really hungry. Let's slaughter all of these filthy bastards! One, I sought Recluse to consult the gods. In the reflection of Lake Ilmen, I saw Rurik's demise. An eagle feasting on another eagle. Rurik was in danger, and the last blow would be made by his own kin. The king found me during my colloquy. I immediately told him about the visions, 
He was in danger from either Truvor, a man without honor or mercy, or Sinius, who sold his heart and soul to the Christians. I suggested the king to distribute some of the conquered lands to his brothers. I knew I made the king uncertain, but so far my visions have proven to be true. I suggested I join Truver during next raid to keep an eye on the brother. We've come here to solve our problems in peace. Truvor, let me talk to them. We brought you those gifts in hope of... Take them! Now! On my way! <laughs> Cowards! You were stupid to think we'd cooperate with you! From now on, Vidar, I am in charge. Everyone listens to me. Tactics and supplies don't bother us anymore. Do you hear me? Whenever I need more warriors, I take them without asking anyone. As I was looking over the battlefield, I heard a disquieting whizzing noise. Two eagles locked in brotherly battle, each one pecking the other senselessly. For a short moment in front of my eyes, I recalled the vision of Rurik's downfall, an eagle feeding off of his chopped kin. The king's in danger. I rushed back, riding my horse to its demise. I returned just in time. A trusty berserk, one of the king's personal guards, tried to assassinate him. In his frantic state, he had to be put down, and I was unable to determine which brother sent the assailant. The king was furious. A blow from a family always hurts the most. Odin saw in Rurik the same man I see now, a godsend. To protect him, I'd have to kill Truver and Sinius. Yet each deed has its price. Rurik hesitantly agreed to sacrifice his firstborn to Odin. Once my job is done, I should lay low for a while to make sure the blame would be put on the remaining cribbage. All these innocent people. What a massacre. What happened? It's Truval! He, he's gone mad! He's fortified himself with the base, and he sent his men to slaughter our foe! They made an execution site out of our oldest and biggest tree around here! It must stop! What can we do? This man has already signed his own death sentence. Look, you have to fight back. You better move aside, peasants. Put down your forks and get back to work. Now! What? Fools! Kill them all! No! No! I can't believe it. Sinius! You two-faced coward! Sinius! My own brother! Double-crossing me like that! No, no Druvor! It wasn't me! You can't even admit your mistake! <laughs> Tuvor is clearly blinded by his lust for revenge. Everyone, listen to me. I come here in the name of King Rurik. We can and will defeat Truvor together and end his bloody reign once and for all. We want Truvor dead. If you can help us with that, we have a deal. Great! Now let's rebuild this settlement to prepare for the assault. Also, each nearby village we capture can help tremendously. It's a good plan. We are at your service, and this settlement is under your command. Enough is enough, Druvor. Your fate ends here. 
Death is coming! <laughs> Life was not worth saving. I disappeared as Rurik asked, but when I reintegrated with the shadows, the voices showed me the truth. I've become a different man. A man whose voice was nothing less but a declaration of gods. And Odin does not forget. It took me almost 15 years to collect my honorarium. Rurik welcomed me with royal luxury, but what can a blind man offer to a seer? Those were earthly commodities I had no use for. I demanded my remittance be paid as agreed upon, with his firstborn. There's a special kind of madness in the eyes of kings. Rurik laughed out at me frantically and threatened with the worst kind of tortures if I was to act upon his son. I reminded him what happened to Sinius, who shunned the gods away and a Truver who got consumed by anger and resentment. This fool ordered his guards to throw me out of the castle, but we'll see who'll be having the last laugh. As predicted by the vision, Rurik died weeks after he refused to give his son to Odin. Due to his son's young age, Rurik was succeeded by Oleg of Novograd, who laid foundations to one of the most powerful states of that time, Kievan Rus. Yet I wasn't victorious either. I wasn't able to please Odin, so he became silent. The only way I could reignite the flame within me was through blood. I've become a nomadic warrior, a prospector of pain and a seeker of honor. I knew the only way to reunite with Odin was in Valhalla. <laughs>